Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Eric. Hey, Eric. Hey, Christian. It's uh, great to be here. Well, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? <laughs> Those are some good questions. So I'm uh, Eric uh, Woodruff. Uh, I am in upstate New York, which can mean a lot of things depending on uh, where you are in New York. Uh, and uh, so right now, I'm I work for Sempris. We're a uh, ITDR companies, that's identity threat detection and response, uh, focused on Active Directory, but also uh, Azure AD and the whole hybrid identity thing. Um, you know, and that's that's what I'm doing right now. I've uh, uh, had a sort of long career path, though, that that sort of got me to this, this point. Well, well that's, I mean, a great place to start. That's what I, I always love to hear, kind of the origin story of the MD. Okay you know so there were if there were a comic you know so get him jazz it up make it exciting but so what was your path to becoming an mvp yeah i mean so from a career perspective uh i mean i actually started off during the dot-com boom uh as a solaris uh engineer um but uh you know as a kid growing up tinkered with computers was like a microsoft fanboy um even during the windows uh, millennium days uh, and, um, yeah, I spent a good long time working in public sector, managed, uh, a team that ran the windows, uh, server group that eventually became the like Microsoft catch all, mm -hmm. uh, and that turned into Azure and office 365 and everything. And, and interestingly, when I was there, um, you know, I, you'd go to blogs and read articles and all other things from MVPs, right? These are the, you know, early two thousands and, and whatnot, um, uh, but just never thought of really getting involved in the community, or maybe I felt more like I, I wasn't like good enough, so to speak for that. Um, you know, and I actually worked at Microsoft for a while after that. And that I, I would say almost was like version two of my career started there. Um, there's a lot of internal community stuff and also a lot of promotion of, you know, working with the external community. Uh, and, you know, I left Microsoft to uh, work as a security architect, identity architect at a few different partners. And, uh, you know, when I did that, I just really missed that community, uh, you know, started blogging, uh, feeling, I, I suppose, much more empowered uh, to do that and sort of share knowledge. Um, and, you know, I think in particular for me, uh, it is the knowledge sharing piece that I, I really enjoy. Uh, you know, I, I taught a lot of workshops and, and whatnot and when you see that that light bulb go off in someone else's head and they they understand and i mean identity is a very complex topic uh just just love it so yeah it's it's funny i mean you talk about um you know the like the whole imposter syndrome thing that we all kind of feel and experience and i think one of the things when i've coached people on you know not necessarily like there's certainly with some people that are interested in becoming an mvp but people that just want to know how to you know create more content and do more that that kind of stuff is I, I i think a lot of people get um it's like writing in general as because it doesn't just flow magically this long 2000 word article um you know it doesn't just flow out and people struggle with that it's like look there's there's simpler ways to approach this smaller steps into that and a lot of the community stuff a lot of you know the path to becoming the mvp is i often say it's creating healthy habits things that do like it's um you know like things that i did like jotting down my notes in one note being you know making sure i'm capturing always push myself to go back hey i had that idea i've even like gone in bed laid down there had the thought in the head gotten up gone back downstairs to the computer opened it back up jotted the stuff down right there while it was in my head and um, yeah, well, sometimes, of course, you wake up the next morning, you look at it and be like, <laughs> stupid ideas that, that that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but just again, it's the, it's just creating those habits that you to 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 go in there and create. But it, at the end of the day, it's all about sharing that knowledge and helping people. And that's the runner's high that you get is yeah. when somebody is just like, this is exactly what I needed or this this very helpful or 
you know, Christian, I can't believe you're an MVP. I can do that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's that, that stuff happens all the time. Well, and you like, you just got your MVP, right? Yep. Yep. So beginning of, uh, beginning of January. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. you. That's very, very cool. And when did you leave? How long were you in Microsoft? When did you, when did you depart? So I left in 2021. Okay. So Um, just, so yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I was there for a uh, shy under three years. So, um, you know, I've worked in services, so I was a PFE huh. and then CE yep. and yep. I think now they're CSAEs and, and whatnot, uh, but yeah. yeah. S- same people doing the stuff, a little more industry focused, but same PFE. I still refer to them as PFEs, but yeah. yeah. I think PFE sounds cool. I was, I was not happy. With yeah. customer engineer <laughs> yeah it, it rolls off the tongue though you know <laughs> iffy. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well very very cool so what kind of stuff are, are you doing uh, or have you done in the community like what's what's your involvement on the community side yeah so i mean primarily so far uh you know it's mostly blogging um trying to get, actually get more out and on the socials uh i i spoke at a b-sides um actually in december uh, would would love to get more into the the conference sort of circuit. Uh, both, I'm personally just sick of the lack of human contact with yeah, uh, yeah. with COVID. Um, but no, I mean, you know, identity is a thing I really have a passion for. And I mean, when I've I've worked with a lot like a lot of organizations where, um, you know, it's it's tough uh, whether you have generalists. Um, who are handling, you know, identity or, uh, you know, securities taking it over, but they don't fully understand what they're doing with it. Um, you know, it's it's a very deep sort of topic uh, with all the bits and pieces in Azure AD and you know, how it ties into Azure and 365. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's what my focus is, is just on identity. Um, and, you know, I guess with some of the other, uh, you know, path to MVP, uh, you know, just a lot of interactions with the product group on sort of, you know, my thoughts and opinions and and all that that good yeah. stuff. So, well, that's the the one. Uh, I mean, I, I'm assuming we're not going to have the in person MVP summit. Said so it's the I, I've always said it's the it's the best benefit of being an MVP is is that getting that FaceTime with the product teams and uh, with the engineering organizations and and of course the other MVPs is just fantastic networking yeah. opportunity that we've obviously not had during the pandemic, but uh, you know, hopefully we'll be coming back to us soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, that's a huge value uh, being in the program. So what, what kind of stuff? So, so you talked a little bit about like what you're focused on, what um, I mean, what, what's new, what do people need to know about what's happening in, in the space? I mean, what, and, and what, by the way, what's incumbents within a, security mvp now because i know they've, they've uh, moved some things around a bunch of people just got yep. security added or now dual mvps around that so i know they moved the buckets around at the back end so what kind of what does that encompass yeah i mean i i think from from what i've seen and uh you know it's a lot of the the ems uh, enterprise mobility security mvps that were you know security focused uh have have come over from uh, you know what I could sort of gather, and there was also some folks that were maybe on the was it the like the data center management, and I don't even remember if that's still a thing, but also kind of I, coming into. I think it is. I think yeah. it's still out there. Yeah, I think a couple of were enterprise mobility that are now also security, and I saw yeah. somebody that was in Azure. I don't know what aspect of Azure they focused on, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting actually because it's. I mean, well, now I know it's Entra, but even though it's Azure AD, uh, it was really modern work as it was referenced or at least inside Microsoft, right? Where they really were the ones that owned Azure Active Directory. And I mean, you can see yeah. with how tightly integrated it is to, you know, the the office suite of things. But, um, uh, you know, I also kind of felt like the EMS folks always kind of got a, they had a rap as like, you're, you're not as good as... Uh, you know, some other, uh, right. Like if you're in a tier thing. So I, I think it's, it's nice to see security get its own uh, sort of spotlight, but. Well, seeing how it's uh, I mean, again, I know that's why I asked like what what's included. It's such a broad category, but when you talk to customers about 
where their concerns are and the top concerns, the top focus of just about every CIO out there, security is the number one answer to those and, you know, needs to be in the modern era. Um, you know, it's, I, I'm always amazed talking with like the, uh, the operations folks at how much when we complain about getting, you know, crappy email or some other exploit attempt or whatever that's coming through, people have no idea that the, how the volume has increased about it's, it's amazing what has been filtered out. Yeah. And uh, you know, so if you have an admin login and can go and look at what's just in junk and what's being caught. Um, so I am I'm, I'm amused by the, the, the items that still get through, but I, that's why you always make sure you report those things. You don't just delete them folks that, you know, the, the Microsoft and your admins need to learn like yeah. how they're trying to get in there. More phishing. Phishing has increased. It seems. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's still funny in a way how poor some phishing emails are. Um, you would almost think the threat actors would have learned by now, uh, you know, go out on Fiverr and hire someone, uh, to, to write your your copy or well, something. But, when uh, the crown prince of <laughs> uh, Wakanda reaches out to him, don't ignore those emails. You, you respond, you help. <laughs> so you need to start writing phishing emails saying that this is a phishing campaign sort of thing. You sign up for it, fish folks that way. But no, I mean, phishing is still, it's, it's a huge thing. Um, I mean, I have a whole, I could rant for hours about how I think email is fundamentally broken uh in in just the way that that things sort of work right and um uh that we put all this sort of uh requirements for for phishing training on our end users and that they're sort of to blame right if they fall for it when right if i if i'm hired in hr or finance or whatever my job is right if i'm not in it it's um right i i get and one angle we we say right like everyone is a security person at an organization but at the same time you're also hired for a business function where Right, your your primary role for being at that company is not right to to make sure that you uh, you know don't get fished. I mean, you know, depending on how you look at it. So, right. um, I I think it's just a bit of undue burden in ways, unfortunately, on our on our end users. Um, but yeah, so what's I mean, what what's the answer to that? Where where is that going? Is it just I mean, we're I, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't feel like not being within the space. It doesn't feel like anything's really changed over the last decade. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, f I feel like with phishing, it's, um, I mean, right. Where with going passwordless, we'll have the hopefully ability for people to not get fished for the credentials, which tends to be what everyone wants, right? They want your creds to get in. Um, so, I mean, I think we are making inroads, sort of there with, you know, Hello for Business, FIDO2, Authenticator app, uh, you know, push notifications, even though those are actually fishable. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's still in, in a way, it doesn't feel like it solves, uh, you know, the the core problem with email. And I get it right, email's big and broad and, um, and it is sort of what it is, but it's just, uh, you know, when I, when I was at, uh, the state of New York and we were implementing DCAM and DMARC and a lot of that. And, and in ways you're like doing these things, but they almost don't even feel like, right. Like you almost kind of don't even really know what they're doing. You're just like, well, the security thing says to implement them. And then you still get phishing email and right. And I mean, it, it, it's just a whole conversation with, within that. So, um, I mean, I suppose you could just, uh, you know, turn off your email and go live in the woods or something. And, you know, you'd, it's appealing. I, <laughs> so I have, I do watch a bunch of those videos, um, on the YouTube where the people go out there and do the off grid, they build their own, you know, uh, log cabins and they, you know, they kind of like, you know, it takes a year, but they, you know, they just do like all in a 20 minute video, walk you through their building. And I just think like, I, I could do that. My wife would never do that. And my, you know, well, I was going to say my kids wouldn't visit me. No, I think all all of my kids would love that as well. They would definitely visit me. My wife just wouldn't wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. my my <laughs> son's too uh, too hooked on Roblox right now to uh, to give up his internet. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's what. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's. I mean, it's, again, an interesting space. A lot lot happening. Um, 
you know, uh, we're just waiting for, um, what is it? What's the, I just, I always forget the phrase that's used in Terminator when uh, the AI becomes self-aware. What is it called? Um, Oh, why do I always forget that word? You know, the, the, like the occurrence, the, the, whatever the, the word is, but um, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about though. Yeah. Well, well once we have chat uh, GPT, right. Doing everything for us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's actually, I've, I'm uh, hosting a conversation next month where we're talking about the impact of uh, chat GPT and, a lot of this AI capability on the office products. I know it's the Microsoft 365 products, but office is easier to say. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah so the, the like uh, the office suite, what could happen? And so talking about that and with loop and yeah, it's it's interesting what's gonna happen there. And it, it'll be so, it's gonna get very difficult to tell what's human and what is, you know, artificial. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think though it's, well, it's funny. Uh, so my fiance, she's actually a, a, a graphic designer. Um, and when Dolly came out and there was this whole sort of buzz in the art community, right? Like, Oh, it will just paint all the pictures for us and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, chat GPT comes out and everyone's like, Oh, all the developers will lose their jobs and everything. And I don't know. I've, I've typed some things into it where the answers are far from, from accurate, I, I think you do have the issue, right, of disinformation or misinformation coming out of it uh, and people maybe not knowing that it's wrong. Um, yeah. But with the whole, like, it's going to take our jobs, I mean, it makes me think of, right, remember when the cloud was a thing and everyone's like, oh, the cloud's going to take our jobs. And I mean, look at now, we we need more IT people than ever. So yeah. I think it's interesting. I'm, I'm not worried about it um, stealing our, our jobs from us, though. I, I'm not either. It's a, I, look, I, I think of like VR, I'm, I'm less impressed with AR. I can't wait. Like, I think that is the game changer. I think when you think of a lot of this, this, a, these AI tools, chat G, GPT and other for like content generation, like you still need the human. There still needs to be review. There still needs to be the inputs to, to generate it. And um, I mean, certain things like, I, you know, think about it from this standpoint, some of these tools, how hard it must be to be a teacher these days and to, to know whether your kids have actually done original work and not just grab something. And so the tools to be able to go in and scan and look for plagiarism and just duplication by the student and what's, what's already been done and like other things like it, it it's, uh, I mean, there's great tools, but all of that is an assist, not a replacement. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah. I, I too, I've gotten in arguments with people much smarter than me that believe that, you know, robots will take over the world and will do so much. And, and, you know, one, you know, I got in an argument with one guy who's uh, said like, and humans will live in the laps of lap of luxury because, you know, robots will do all that. I'm like, man, you don't know. Somebody <laughs> owns those robots, like yeah. it, human nature. It's like, it's not going to work out that way, but Yeah. Anyway, I know that's a bigger topic. That's a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, for folks that are interested in uh, reaching out to you or following you, what, like, where do you participate? Where are you most active? What are the best ways to find you? Uh, I mean, so I have my blog, ericonidentity.com, which is, uh, you know, my, my main sort of source of putting content out there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm on uh, Twitter, Mastodon, um, Mastodon, American Identity, uh, my Twitter handles a uh, bit more convoluted. You can just get at my, at my website, LinkedIn. I mean, all the things I, I try to be active on the socials. Um, I've been a little wider. I, I will tell you, I find that Mastodon is a bit, um, it can be a bit tough uh, if you don't already have a huge following, mm. I feel like compared to uh, uh, you know Twitter. Um but yeah, I'm out there and, you know, I'm, I'm open this year. I've submitted to uh, uh, some industry conferences, sort of hoping to, to get out there, some some B-size, RSA, uh, Identiverse, which is a big identity-specific conference. Um, so just, you know, hoping to get out there, you know, uh, you know, meet folks. Uh, no. I think those hallway conversations are definitely some of the, the best things. and They're always the best things. I, yeah. <laughs> in fact, I, 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 I was a 
10 year in a row to inspire and the, the Microsoft partner conference that's of the three marquee Microsoft build inspire ignite inspire was my favorite. And, uh, the last two, three years, uh, I saw a couple sessions in the expo hall, but didn't go to a single classroom or you know a single thing. I spent all of my time in meetings and and in the you know expo hall meeting with the product teams and talking with partners at their booths and over in the the you know, the international lounges. It's it's the conversations with people. It's the serendipitous uh, collisions of people that uh, I mean where you get the greatest value out of it. So I'm. I'm happy to see that events like numbers are on the rise very quickly. While there are a lot of people who have said flat out, um, I'm no interest in in person. I'm fine with like they were introverts before, and now there's more than ever before online. They've got those options, yeah. but for the rest of us, and I think the uh, the younger uh, uh, aged uh, tech workers coming in want to have and need to have more of that in person experience. So I'm happy to see that. Sorry, I'm at the end of my soapbox on that topic. <laughs> you're, 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 no, you're okay. I mean, I, I find a lot of the virtual conferences, it's, it's too easy these days to start multitasking and, right. right? I mean, it's like the, the benefit you used to have of uh, when I was a Microsoft customer of having services or a consultant come in and right, you go squirrel away in a conference room for a few days and nobody yeah. knows where you are and you just get, you get everything done. You have all the distractions put away. And yep. uh, I, I think you just can't be in-person conferences. Even I'm an introvert. I can play an extrovert for things like this, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we've all become a little more introverted, you know, over the last couple of years, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited for things to, to open back up and, yeah. and uh, meet more people and expand the network. But well, but Eric has been great getting to know you and hopefully see you at one of these future events. And yeah. I don't get too many security events, but there's plenty that there's, you know, more and more crossover stuff just because it's such an important uh, topic area. So maybe I'll see you at one of things like a dev connections type event or something. So, yeah, be great. All right. Well, anyway, well, thanks a lot for doing this and we'll yeah. talk to you soon. Thanks, Christian. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for having me. <laughs>